How are we doing everyone? Hope you're well, Mr. Boulder here, and I'm back today with a video talking about a couple of huge metal bands that we all know and love, Iron Maiden and Judas Priest, who in the early 1990s both lost their singer, uh, Bruce Dickinson leaving Iron Maiden in 1993, and uh, Rob Halford leaving Judas Priest in 1992. Uh, Maiden went on to replace Bruce with former Wolfsbane vocalist Blaze Bailey. And Judas Priest brought in Tim Ripper Owens. Um, both of these eras from these bands um, don't get uh, enough love and respect as they deserve as far as I'm concerned. Um, I enjoyed both of the eras of these bands. I seem to be in the minority though. A lot of people not a big fan of the Blaze era of Iron Maiden. Not a big fan of the Tim Ripper Owens era of Judas Priest. But I think they're really good. So I'm here to talk about both eras today. So up first, let's talk about the first album that was released, and this is uh, 1995 Iron Maiden's The X Factor, the first one to feature Blaze Bailey on the lead vocals. Um, I won't lie, it took me a while to get into this album, I didn't love it from the off, I did like it, but I didn't love it, but I went back to it years later and realised I've been missing out. Um, it's one of those albums where if you give it time, uh, the magic really starts to come out of the speakers. This was the start of Maiden for me. And when I started to make um, songs unnecessarily long, that was one of my initial problems with this album. I remember thinking uh, a lot of the intros are similar, very sort of long and drawn out, and don't sort of uh, get on with it. But the more I listened to the album, the more I enjoyed it. Uh, so, first track, Sun of the Cross is an 11 minute track, uh, a real dark, brooding opener. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, the guitar melodies in this song are superb. And Blaze Bailey's voice is absolutely excellent. I love his vocals, particularly in the chorus. He sounds really strong, really good. Uh, track 2, Lord of the Flies, is much more up-tempo from the off. Great tune. Again, the riffs I really like. Um, chorus is strong. Man on the Edge, that was the first Blaze era song that we heard, that which was a single. Fantastic track. I've seen Blaze a couple of times live in the last couple of years, and he plays that one live at the moment, and it sounds fantastic. Um, really like the lyrics in that song. The chorus is great. Blaze sounding good. I like the guitar work. Um, so we're three songs in, and I'm three for three on this record so far. Those first three songs I really, really enjoy. Track four, Fortunes of War, is a good song which is spoiled by a very lazily written chorus. It's basically Blaze just repeating the song, uh, sorry, the lyrics, Fortunes of War, over and over again, and slightly changing the vocal style. It lets the song down. Other than that, it's a decent tune. Uh, Look for the Truth and the Aftermath are up next. They are a little bit on the filler side for me. Look for the Truth I do quite like, but the Aftermath I do find a bit of a boring song. And uh, if it wasn't on this record, I could absolutely live without it. After that, we've got Judgment on Heaven and Blood on the World's Hands, which are absolutely fantastic songs, very underrated in my opinion. Um, Judgment on Heaven, uh, I really like the intro parts of the guitars and the bass. Um, the chorus is strong, but Blood on the World's Hands for me is fantastic. Blaze's vocal delivery is superb. He sounds great. Uh, brilliant chorus, um, some great riffs and solos again from uh, Yannick and Dave Murray. Excellent songs, very much underrated and don't get anywhere near as much love as far as I'm concerned. Um, then got The Edge of Darkness, a uh, decent tune, but not one of the best ones on the album. 2AM, uh, the penultimate track I really like. I like the lyrics in that song. Blaze's voice sounding good, as always. And it closes with The Unbeliever, which is just over eight minutes long. Uh, good way to close the album. Not the strongest song on this uh, record, but definitely not bad. The X Factor from 1995, I actually think um, Blaze's voice works really well on this album because it's a very dark sounding album for Iron Maiden. I think the dark uh, sort of subject matters um, suit Blaze's baritone and lower sort of range. I think they really suit his voice. Um, an album that I think is very much underrated and doesn't, one of those albums that definitely does not deserve its bad reputation as far as I'm concerned. So that's the first album that we've spoken about, X Factor from the Iron Maiden, which came out from the Iron Maiden, from Iron Maiden, which came out in 1995. Good stuff. Um, so next up, it's over here. The first album that Judas Priest put out after Rob Halford's exit. So this is Jugulator, which arrived in 1997. And I know there's a huge crack in the case, which I need to replace. Um, different story with this album. I love this straight away, whereas it took some time for me to warm to the X Factor. Not the case here. The first track I heard on this was uh, Bullet Train, which was on a CD which came free with Metal Hammer magazine. Um, 
Loved it from the off, so pick the album up, and this album blew me away straight away. It's without a doubt Priest's heaviest album. Uh, the guitar riffs across this entire record are really, really good. Scott Travis's drums are fantastic, and Ripper Owens' vocals are just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, an amazing singer. And an album packed with really, really good songs. Uh, the first track, the title track, is superb. Uh, the vocals from Ripper Owens across the entire song are great. But especially the high screams. He just sounds absolutely fantastic. Great track, great opener. Chorus is superb. Bloodstain next is a, another great tune which I really enjoy. Again, Tim Ripper Owens' vocals and the choruses are fantastic. Yeah, you've got Dead Meat, track three. Uh, not as good as the opening two tracks. I still like it. Um, it's driven along nicely by Scott Travis's double kick drums. Uh, some of the lyrics are a little bit silly, but I can look past that. Um, Death Row next. Uh, that's a good tune as well. Um, again, not as strong as the first two, but I do like that one. Uh, Decapitate, track five. is not the best song this album, but I still don't mind it, it has to be said. Uh, Burning Hell, uh, decent tune, uh, really, really strong vocals again. Uh, the solos are fantastic in that song. Uh, Brain Dead Up Next is a good tune. Abductors, probably the weakest song in this album, but I still did, don't mind it at all. You know, it's not a bad song in the slightest. Uh, Bullet Train Next, I love that intro guitar riff. Um, again, great vocals from Ripper. Again, Scott Travis's drums are fantastic. And then the song closes with what is, in my opinion, the best song of the Ripper Owens era. Uh, last track is Cathedral Spies, which is about nine and a half minutes long. Uh, great vocals throughout the entire song. Some of the highs are absolutely phenomenal. Um, solos are fantastic. Scott's drums are great. Just an absolutely amazing song which closes this record, which I absolutely love to this day. Definitely my favourite song from the Ripper Owens era. Judas Priest Jugulator from 1997 is really, really heavy. A fantastic album. Terrible album artwork, but an album that definitely deserves more love as far as I'm concerned. I think it's great and I always have done. Picked up only about a month or two after it came out and just listened to it constantly back in 1997. It's a fantastic album, which is very much underrated, I think. Excellent stuff. Like I say, the guitar work from Glenn Tips and the KK Down, and whether it's the riffs or the silos, is very strong. Scott's drums are great. Ripper sounds fantastic. Superb album. So a quick sip of coffee before we uh, go on to the next album. And we go on to 1998. And the second and last album to feature Blaze Bale on the lead vocals. Uh, Virtual Eleven, which came out on uh, March 23rd, 1998. Now, unlike um, The X Factor, I love this album from the off. I didn't need time to warm up to this one at all. Um, so kicking off with the first track, Future Real, which is an excellent, energetic opening track on this album. Great guitar riffs, very, very catchy. They get in your head pretty much straight away. Um, just a three-minute sort of banger which kicks this one off. Great vocals from Blaze in the chorus. Uh, track two, The Angel and the Gambler. Now, I'm going to say something now that a lot of people are going to think is absolute insanity, but I've never, ever had a problem with The Angel and the Gambler. I've loved it from the second I first heard it, and it was the lead single from this album. Does it need to be 10 minutes long nearly? Not at all. Uh, the five minute edited single version will do the job nicely. But I can listen to the full nine minute version and it just doesn't bother me in the slightest. And I know that will sound like absolute insanity to a lot of people, but it's never been a problem for me. The chorus is incredibly repetitive and it doesn't need to be in there as much as it is. But it's there and I like it. Never had a problem with that song. Good tune. I like that one a lot. Side Truth. Uh, Side 2 starts off with Lightning Strikes Twice. Again, a great track. I love the chorus. I love the lyrics in that one. Blaze sounding good. The guitar's really, really good. But uh, the creme de la creme of this album is uh, track 4, The Clowned Man, which is just superb. Uh, about an eight and a half, nine minute song. Um, I love the intro part. Sounds really nice. Blaze's vocals are great. Um, he sounds absolutely fantastic in the chorus when he's uh, shouting freedom and holding that note out. The guitar lines behind it sounds great. The solos from Yannick and Dave Murray are absolutely fantastic. That song is absolutely brilliant. Uh, side 3 kicks off when two worlds collide, which is a good tune. I like that one a lot. Again, the chorus is strong. Uh, Nico's drumming is really, really good on that track. Uh, the Educated Fool... Not so fussed about that one, but I still enjoy it. It's probably one of the weaker songs on the album. 
Um, then you get to Don't Look Through the Eyes of a Stranger. Um, again, I like it. It's not as strong as some of the other stuff on this album, though. But I do like it. It's a good tune. Um, the intro of that one reminds me of Nirvana's New Trove. It's a little bit similar to one of the chords that they're using in the picking pattern on the guitars. Uh, last track on the album, Como Estas Amigos. I probably not pronounced that correctly, but who cares? It's an okay closer. It's grown on me more over the years. I wasn't a big fan of it when I first heard it. Uh, Blaze's vocals are good, and the guitar work I really like. Uh, Virtual Eleven from 1998 is an album, um, again, that I think doesn't deserve the hate that it gets. I mean, don't get me wrong, with both of these Blaze era albums, there is room for improvement. Um, but I certainly don't think they deserve the hate that they get. Um, decent album. I like that one a lot. Uh, I know it's crazy to a lot of people, but I've never had a problem with it. And so the last album to talk about, we go to 2001. And here's Judas Priest Demolition, which I only picked up a couple of years ago. I never actually got around to picking this up. So um, when I finally got around to picking it up, I was really excited to hear this. Because like I say, I absolutely love Jugulator. Um, the same cannot be said for this, though. This is a real letdown after the excellent Jugulator from 1997. This isn't all bad. Uh, there's some good songs on it, but there's some real shit on it at the same time. Uh, it kicks off with Machine Man, the first track, uh, which is very up-tempo, really, really good. Scott Travis's drums are fantastic. Good vocals from Ripper. One-on-one uh, -on -one track, too. I really like that one as well. The chorus is very strong. Uh, energetic song, again, driven along by some really nice riffs. But then things start to go sideways. Um, Hell is Home and Jekyll and Hyde, they're following two tracks. Uh, not that great, it has to be said. Close to you, um, quite forgetful, it's got to be said. Devil Digger is an okay song, but a horribly cliched song title, which can get in the bin. Uh, not a great title at all, but the chorus is okay in that one. Blood Suckers up next is really, really strong, actually. I like that tune a lot. When you listen to the lyrics, it sounds like they're talking about the um, trial for when they went to court back in the early 90s, when those two guys tried to kill themselves after listening to a... Uh, Better by you, better than me. Um, I might be wrong, but it sounds like that's what the lyrics are about in that tune. That is definitely one of the stronger songs on the album. Um, track 8, In Between, is quite forgetful. Feed On Me is not very good either. Uh, track 10, Subterfuge, is good. Again, the chorus is really strong. Some good guitar work. Uh, then you have Cyberface, which sounds like Priest kind of thought, trying to make himself sound updated. But to be honest, Cyberface is a track that would sound, uh, a title that would sound dated 1991, let alone 2001. It's an okay track, but not one of their best, as to be said. Closes with Metal Messiah. Um, that's not a great track either. It's okay, but that's about as complimentary as I can be about it. You've got a couple of bonus tracks here, which are re-recorded in Rapid Fire, which is fine. And the Green Man Alishi reworking as well. Um, I actually prefer that over the Rapid Fire cover because they've slowed it down a little bit. And it actually makes it sound better. It makes it sound more heavy. But compared to uh, Juggalator, for me, Demolition is a big letdown. Um, nowhere near as good as uh, Juggalator, it has to be said. It's got its moments, but a few and far between. Some of the riffing on this album is very good, but some of it is very, very generic and dull. Um, Scott Travis's drum work is good throughout. Tim Ripper Owen sounds absolutely fantastic, but uh, for me, Demolition is an album that's a little bit of a letdown. Um, not as good as Jugulator. It's okay in places, but quite disappointing, it has to be said. So there we go. That's uh, me talking about the albums from the uh, the Ripper years and the uh, Blaze Bailey years. So while we're here, why don't we do a quick album ranking? I just need to pick this album up off the floor, which I wasn't supposed to put down there. So let's do a quick ranking of these four albums then. So for me, the weakest of these four is easily Judas Priest Demolition from 2001. Like I say, a few good tracks, but mostly very disappointing. Uh, in third place, I'm going to go with Virtual Eleven. Yep, The Angel and Gambler does not need to be as long as it is, but I still enjoy it. Uh, Future and the Clansman are where it's at on this album for me. The best songs, uh, definitely. So that's uh, number three. Number two, I'm going to go with the X Factor. Absolutely does not deserve its bad reputation. Um, Son of the Cross, Lord of the Flies, Man on the Edge, um, Judgment from Heaven, um, Blood on the World's Hands. Great underrated songs. There's room for improvement. 
but really doesn't deserve its bad reputation. But number one of these albums for me, without a doubt, is Judas Priest, Jugulator. Absolutely fantastic, really heavy, a little bit thrashy in places, to be honest. Great riffs across the whole album. Scott Travis's drums are superb. Tim Ripper Owens did an absolutely fantastic job on the vocals. If you have ignored the eras from both of these bands, um, I suggest that you go back and give them another chance because um, there's some fantastic stuff here. But yeah, that's number one in that little album ranking. And that's it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. And if you're uh, watching still now, thank you for watching to the end. Uh, get in touch. Let me know what you think about the Ripper Owens years and the Blaze Bailey years. Do you think that they're underrated like I do or you just not have any time for them at all? Uh, cheers for watching guys like I said already um, I shall be back with you next week uh, until next time as per usual cheers take care and I'll see you soon